happy dream, gentle and kind. The happy dream, in the most simplest terms, is, is a, a dream of non-judgment. And what that really entails is, at some point, you, you start to realize that, that human beings seem to organize the world they see and their lives on earth, so to speak, based on a belief system. And forgiveness, which is what the happy dream is about, it's like, it's like a giant, all-encompassing belief. In fact, it's, it's such a large belief that it, it literally like swallows up, just like Jonah and the whale, it just swallows up all the other ones. And what that means in practical terms is, when you have the experience of forgiveness, you, you have the experience that all specific beliefs are completely untrue. And so, it puts your mind in a state of, of openness, uh, complete open-mindedness, complete all-inclusiveness, complete acceptance. So that means, practically speaking, that that you absolutely can never get into an argument ever again. Uh, because you've had this experience that, that there's no specific beliefs that are more true than other ones. They're all equally false. And therefore all the labels, the things that people seem to be defending of different religions, different cultures, different kind of beliefs associated with ethnic uh, differences and everything, you find that, that not only are there zero significant differences, but there are zero differences. Uh, you have an experience of the, of the unified mind, the unified awareness, in which everything is you, literally. Everything is, is mine and everything is, you're identified with that. So, so you've completely transcended arguments, debates, um, being right, being wrong, you completely transcend opinions. Uh, you, you could possibly hold the slightest opinion about anything because that opinion would be based on specific beliefs and, and the happy dream laughs at the very idea. And so for me it's, it's very joyful because here we're calling this a oneness festival and that's a beautiful name for it. We're not promoting A Course in Miracles. We're not promoting any theology, including the Course. Uh, and, and the Course itself says that, you know, he's got the end of uh, the paragraph in Lesson 189, uh, the one that starts off, simply do this, be still, lay aside all thoughts of what you are, what God is. And then he goes on to say, forget this world, forget this Course, and come with open arms unto your God. That's the experience of the happy dream. So you, you literally lose all sense of, of discrimination in terms of the specifics. There's still, the Spirit can still flow through you with what we'll call guidance, but that guidance is for the whole. It's for the whole universe. It's not really for specific ones. It can still involve words, but the presence of love is so strong that, that there's, there, the rejection becomes impossible, abandonment becomes impossible. All the things that seem to be the sticking points around religion, all become impossible. Suddenly, religion becomes the experience of peace of mind, which is like, oh, that's a different definition. You know, are you Hindu? Are you Muslim? Are you Christian? Peace, oh peace, <laughs> That's, it's an experience that literally transcends all the theologies and all the concepts. So, talk about the idea, I, you know, I've never met a stranger, you know, who would a stranger be if, if love is welcoming to one and all, then there's that feeling of home, it's a presence of, of being home. You might say that it's, it's where uh, heaven and earth cease to exist as separate states. I always like that part of the Course. Heaven and earth cease to exist as
this separate space. You know, it's the teaching, heaven is here, heaven is now. And that's the feel of the happy dream. That's what makes it happy. It's not a, a future state. It's not something that you hope and wish for. Someday, some way, we'll find a new way of living. We'll find a way of forgiving. Someday. No, it's not that. You know, it's, that's not it either. Because that sounds very hopeful, you know, but, but hopefulness doesn't really have a place in the happy dream. It's not hoping for anything. It's, it's, it's an actual state. And for me, that's been kind of a treat for me when I've traveled around the world and met all these different people in, tr in different cultures and languages and traditions and everything. It's, it's a fiesta. It's a party. It's like an ongoing party because there's no point to be made. You know, that's the, that's the fun of it. There is absolutely no point. There's not, it's not like that thing on Saturday Night Live, point, counterpoint. There's, there's not even, a, there's no counterpoint, but there's no point. And, and when people sometimes say to me, what's the point of this world? I say, well, really, there is no point. Uh, you, you can't find anything that's a point, but you could say that, that happiness, if God's will for us is perfect happiness, if you really had to come up with something like a purpose, it would have to be happiness. Forgiveness is just a name we could say that, that can equate with happiness. If forgiveness is our function while we perceive a world, then Jesus says in the workbook, my happiness and my function are one. They are the same. Imagine you're growing up with your parents and they're going, what are you going to be when you grow up? And you're like five years old, you want to be a fireman, you want to be a ballerina. Happy? Happy? You want to be happy? Go. You'll be like, no, no, you don't understand the question. But, but actually, that is the answer, really. You know, what's the point of, of your being here? To be happy. Okay. That's good. And we're not talking about a temporary happiness that's associated with specific outcomes. You know, oh, I'm happy because I got the raise, or I'm happy because I, got, I found my soulmate, or I'm happy because I won the lottery, or I'm happy because I finally got through the workbook lessons of A Course in Miracles. <laughs> Until the guidance said, now, let's do it again. Ah! You know, it's not a temporary kind of happiness. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not really aligned at all. So really that's the thing. And that's what I, I have enjoyed um, in just meeting with people, when people invite me into their homes, or, you know, say stay with me, or travel with me, or so on and so forth. It's a very joyful experience, because there's no uh, agenda with it. You know, that's another thing. The happy dream has, has absolutely no agenda. I, I kind of use enlightenment as synonymous with the happy dream in the sense that the Course even says that, that that's really the goal. The goal is forgiveness. And, and the abstraction of, of waking up is, you know, there's one part in the Course where it says, God will take the final step. Like, we make the mind ready by simply emptying the mind of everything that's not of God, and even though God doesn't really take steps, it's more like, like once we're just in a sustained state of, of happiness, that, that the body and the world can be gently, gently laid aside. In fact, I really like that part in the, the teacher's manual, where it says that, that there are those who have laid the body down, laid the body aside, in order to get this word, increase their helpfulness. Isn't that an interesting phrase in the Course in Miracles? There are those that have laid the body down in order to increase their helpfulness. Now from the ego's perspective, it's like, increase? Yeah. Dead is not really <laughs> a, a dead, inanimate body, you know. It can't do a lot of speaking. <laughs> It can't do a lot of smiling, can't do a lot of hugging. You can see where the ego could come right in and say, Oh, 
You made a you made a transcription error there to increase, and that's not to say that Jesus is encouraging suicide. Uh, well, because some of, of us have, have gone through and thought, oh, what's the fastest shot here? You know, this body thing, I'll get rid of this thing. And once it's wrong, I'll show it who's boss. No, no, that, that eternal life is not reached through death, it's reached through resurrection of the mind. It's reached through forgiveness. So when he's saying many of, there are those that have laid the body aside to increase their helpfulness, they're saying, there are those who have forgiven the world, who have have just gone into the glee and joy of the happy dream, and then have seemed to cease in appearance. But it's not like anybody goes anywhere. I mean, for years people have said, well, you know, like I would go give talks at Unity Churches and everything, and like in the Unity Churches when you go around, nobody talks about death or dying. <coughs> It's always making a transition. Nobody. That's the buzzword, transition. You get there, they, they're given a eulogy. You, you don't come out here and hear the dead word out here in California very often. It's past, <laughs> transitioned, you know, something, but not died. Nobody <laughs> dies in California. <laughs> uh, they like transition. They pass. But where do they pass to? And, and I used to say, where do they transition to? And, and then they would say, well, to the other side. And I'd say, how many sides are there in Unity? I'm in a Unity church and you guys are still talking about going to the other side. How many sides are there in Unity? So it's, you start to just pop all the assumptions and what you start to realize is it's just, it's a perceptual dream. It's, it's entirely like a, in a quantum way, it's entirely just a projection of, of consciousness of belief. And when you let that consciousness be purified and released of judgment, that's what the happy dream is. And because of it's a quantum world, so to speak, it's a quantum universe, that when you accept the happy dream, then that's the only dream that there is. There's not concurrently a happy dream running and then below it, an unhappy dream. The unhappy dream was the misperception. And the happy dream is, is what is the closest uh, touchstone, the closest thing to like heaven and earth. Um, the being borderline. One. The borderland, the borderline. yeah, that's another call. Yeah, it's called the borderland too, as well. And, and that's where there's this unification. It's, it's so close to heaven that, that it's like, your feet no longer touch the ground, so to speak, you know. You, you're just like carried in it, you're just lifted in it. 